Shia, the most oppressed people in the history of America, from Karbala to today, all the Shias have been extremely oppressed. About 1.8 billion Muslims in the world, and from those, there are 400 million Shias in the world. And just in Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, and India, there are more than 200 million Shias just in these four countries. Um, Iran has uh, just over 70 million Shias, Pakistan has uh, about 50 million Shias, India has 60 million Shias, and Iraq has 20 million Shias. So if you just add these up, so there are at least more than 200 million Shias um, in these four countries. And the rest of the world makes up the, the other 200 million. Now, Pakistan has always been a, a very stronghold of the Shias from the beginning because the founder of Pakistan was Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who was a Shias in Ashari. Majority of the Shias in Pakistan get along very easily with majority of the Sunnis. More than 60% of Pakistan's population is Bareilly Sunni. The Shias get along very well with the Bareilly's, very well even with the Deobandis, who um, after the Shias are the uh, biggest minority. Most of the people in Pakistan are Sunni Muslims and then it's Shias, then it's the Deobandis and then there are other uh, schools of thought. But the most oppressed people in the history of mankind have been the Shias. You can see that in our history we have the incident of Karbala and other incidents. Shias are the followers of Imam Ali salam, and this word has appeared in the Holy Quran Wa inna min Ibrahim. Indeed Ibrahim salam, is one of the Shias or followers of uh, Nuh salam. So the followers of the 12 Imams are known to be Shias. Now, killing a Shia in Pakistan means that you're killing um, uh, the founder of Pakistan, you're killing uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Uh, and therefore, anyone who hates Shias in Pakistan has no right to live there. I'm surprised uh, how uh, people justify killing uh, an innocent person in Pakistan and not only an uh, uh, innocent person but an innocent Muslim in a country which was uh, established uh, based on the religion of Islam. Uh, where do you find in Quran or in Hadith books that you know it is justified to kill a person? Unfortunately, when we see Islam and how it's portrayed in the media today, we find that it is represented by a set of a small minority of Muslims that have misinterpreted the messages of the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet and sometimes rely on fabricated uh, traditions and hadiths um, attributed to the Prophet Muhammad. What they're doing does not represent Islam and it's nearly it's not in near proximity of the teachings of Islam. Um, the religion of Islam within the Holy Quran speaks of safeguarding uh, the different houses of worship. Within one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that Allah is the protector of the churches and the synagogues and the mosques and the monasteries where God's name is remembered in abundance. So Allah gives respect to all houses of worship. And in nowhere in the Holy Quran, Allah speaks of the notion of fighting or killing. Therefore, when we see uh, different uh, group terrorist groups attacking innocent people, burning down churches and synagogues, um, this is not aligned with the teachings of the Quran. Similarly, the Quran speaks of the notion of brotherhood and unity amongst Muslims. Muslims from different schools of thought, they could be Hanbali, they could be Shafi'i, they could be Ja'fari. At the end of the day, Allah speaks to the believers as brothers. When you stand here resisting this genocide, people will tell you that you're trying to create a rift between your fellow Muslims. 
No, you're not. There is no rift when it comes to human rights. There is no rift when it comes to justice. There is no rift when it comes to freedom for all. When you say and when you demand your human rights and when you demand justice, you are not creating strife. You're only demanding what is your natural born right as a human being. If it was a sectarian thing, the Shia Sunni was a sectarian thing, then the whole of the country would finish and there would be a civil war in Pakistan. So it is not sectarian because Shias and Sunnis are married into each other. There are many Sunnis who are married into Shias and many Shias who are married into Sunni families. And therefore, it is not a sectarian thing. There is no particular place in Pakistan that is all Shia. No town, no city that, that, you know, that is completely Shia, no town and city that is completely Sunni. They are all mixed together. Terrorism has no religion. We don't say Muslim terrorists or Christian terrorists. Don't say that, okay, okay, this is a sectarian issue. It's not just sectarian issue. It is about all, you know, all about ideology. Their ideology is to kill. In Pakistan, they are not just killing the Shias, they are killing the Sunnis also. They are attacking the Sunnis also, the Sufis and Hindus and Christians. Why, why the world is silent? The problem, brothers and sisters, is not here. It's that the silence of the world that we see today. Shias are being targeted every corner of the earth. You go to Bahrain, there are Shias who have been killed, brothers and sisters. You come to Pakistan, there are Shias who have been targeted. You come to Syria, Shias have been targeted. You come to every corner of the earth, Shias are being killed and nobody to speak on behalf of the Shia. Nobody to speak and come and rescue those mu'mineen. Why? Why? Where are those people in the world, brothers and sisters? Where are those people who are for human rights? We ask everyone to join us as we gathered here today to save and help our mu'mineen in Pakistan and every corner of the earth. Those who are being killed for no reason and we call for Pakistan government and every government who is killing the innocent Muslims and killing the innocent Shia to start killing the Muslims and Shia and we ask to stop now we ask them to stop killing them now In this century, in, in 20th century, we've seen many enemies of the Shias, mainly al -Isabu. Taliban didn't appear out of nowhere. It is an ideology that has proliferated to our Ummah that is out to annihilate the Shia minority.